This is new to me. Can you hear me? You may want to turn it up a little bit. I thank God for being here today. You know, we serve a good God, and no matter what, we need to be so thankful that he saved us. Amen? Because we are living in a world where people are always, they always got something to say. But before I get started, I want to thank God for Pastor Mike Salmon and his family. And I want to thank God for all of you. Excuse me if I don't move around a little bit. I, I, I usually don't move around. I like sitting and preaching, sitting and teaching. But as I, Pastor Mike asked me to come and speak, and I'm, I'm grateful. I, I thank God that he thinks enough of me to invite me. I'm not one to bite my tongue about what I got to say, and I don't think he is either. And you know, it's so, we live in a generation of people that, we must know who they are. How many of y'all know that? Excuse me if I don't go through the formalities of a lot of preachers. and But I, I want to get down to a subject that is so prevalent in every church in all our lives, whether we're in the sanctuary or whether we're out of the sanctuary, whether we're in our homes or whether we're in the schools. And it's what does Satan look like to you? I want to go there because Satan is attacking the people of God. Satan is trying to attack the very foundation of salvation. How many of you have had your foundation attacked? I'm going to be coming out of the book of 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. I don't know where God is going to lead me, but I've already preached on one message this morning, so I might as well. Two is good. Amen? If you would, if, if you have the scripture, let's stand for the reading of God's word. 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this word as it goes forth. Bless me as I speak to your people. Lord, let it touch every one of our hearts. Lord, let it be instructions of life that we would increase in strength, Lord, and we would cre increase in obedience. Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed, y'all, I, I have a problem reading. Bear with me. Let me start over. What to God you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over with godly jealousy. For I have what? Espouse you. <laughs> y'all y'all gotta bear with me. One husband, that I may present you as chaste. Somebody might have to help me read. Come on, Pastor. Come up here a minute. Help me read. This light has got me a little crossed up. Verse 1 like, 15. Like I said, I think I'm younger than you. All right. Number three? Yes. Three, three. 
Hello. All right. Hallelujah. Here. Pastor Toby. Here you go. Look at the old men are helping the old men. Don't you laugh. One day I'll be like them. Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly. Yes. And indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. Mm -hmm. But I fear, least somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you have received a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Come on. For I consider that I am not all, at all inferior to the most eminent apostles, even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. And when I was pres present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. And in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you, and so I will keep myself. As the truth of Christ is to me, no one will stop me from this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Why? Because I do not love you? God knows. But what I do, I will also, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself in, as an, into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I love this verse of Scripture because you may be seated. The pastor had said something a while ago about what people believe and what they hear. And there's a lot of confusion, did I say it, in the house of God. And the confusion starts with what people believe and not what they're searching in the scripture to see. And I like Pastor Salmon. He came by the church one day and he says, well, Pastor, I believe this. I said, well, explain it to me. You know, I, I love a brother that will explain it to me, but I'm kind of dumb, so I just said, well, that sounds good. But we are not ignorant. We're not ignorant. If we're saved, we're not ignorant. And if any man comes to you preaching any other doctrine, see, the problem we have today is we have so many people saying that your wrong is right. I just classify it this way. As a pastor, my job is to get you the right instructions so you'll make it to heaven. If you don't want the instructions, there is somebody to give it to you. Hello? Satan has brought somebody along to give it to you. I realize the church has fallen in to this thing they're so easily saying I'm a child of God when they're truly some of them are children of the devil but do you recognize uh oh who you're working with 
y'all y'all need to understand who you're working with you know Samson I, I, I was preaching this morning and I said Samson was a great man of God uh oh did I say that but he st wanted to go work with something else it wasn't set up for him some of you are asking God for things and he's not answering you so you want to go get what you want and not what you need what the church needs now is holiness because he said without holiness no man shall see God you know I thought about a lot of things as I was diving into this because sometimes we dive into things God you know God will try us. Satan is also there trying to try us. Do y'all know Satan is trying to try you? You know, as a pastor, somebody would say, well, pastor, you know, you should be a peacemaker. But what happens when the devil comes up against you? Are you going to still hold your peace? See, sometimes we don't know what we're working with. I realized I used to be a mean fella. I used to fight at the drop of a hat. Just drop the hat. We gone. It wasn't no problem. But I realized Satan is there to make you start acting like he acts and like you used to act. So if you say you're saved and you're still acting like the old man, something is wrong. Did I say something is wrong? Because somebody took a swing at me, Pastor, the other day. Did, did I say that? They took a swing at me. You know, God, I, I, I'm, I'm a pastor. I, I can tell you what my life is like. When they say be an epistle, open epistle. Don't have no closed chapters in your life. So if you're sitting there today and you got some closed chapters that you can't talk about openly, maybe there's an altar. What did you say, prayer, all-night prayer? Maybe you need to visit the all-night prayer altar. See, we still are men. And just as soon as I was attacked survival kicked in how many of you ever had survival kicked in and the fellow who attacked me I put him on his back but the power of God kept me from hurting him wait a minute see what y'all don't understand is what are you going to do when Satan attacks you are you going to lay down because God gave you power to do what? Overcome the powers of Satan. Some of y'all been letting Satan beat you up. I didn't mean to go there. Some of you have been letting Satan come in your house. He you just walk on in. You open the door. Wait a minute. You open the door for him. Why? Because he was a part of your old life and you miss him. Uh oh. One scripture said something about renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty. That was over in the second chapter of 2 Corinthians. I don't know what you're denouncing, but if you know what you're working with and who you're working with, you know, I, I like a pastor that would just boldly get up and say what you had to say a while ago, Pastor. See, when we was in the world, how many of you ever been in the world? You wasn't saved. When folks done you wrong, what'd you do? You told them right then. But now that you're saved, you got this, wait a minute, you don't know what you're working with. 
you won't correct them right then when it was wrong then. You want to save it for... You, you got secret love for the sinner. So y'all gonna got quiet on me. I, I know one thing about open rebuke. It's better than secret love. I, I, listen, your pastor today told you right. If you got something to say, let's say it. Get it out. Because there's other people or did I say other people? Other men that's preaching and teaching. I like what he's, he's teaching on. Because some people are trying to get to heaven before God has called them. Some people want to go to heaven and they ain't ready to go to heaven. They working with Satan still. I'm, I, you know, look. Quit trying to not condemn ungodliness. Y'all hear me. You've already judged what's right or wrong. How many of you have been seeing folks that say they saved and sanctified and they still, they still doing wrong and you say you love them? It's time that you stand up and raise up the banner of holiness and say, wait a minute, hold up. I love you. I, I know I love you because what I'm getting ready to do is help you get right. I don't want to see you go to hell. If I want to go to heaven, I want you, Pastor, don't you want to see me there? Listen. I, I, you know, I'm going to have to well, I'm going to get him some shotgun shells. Pastor got seven daughters. I don't want to get him a shotgun. He, he's a little early. I get him the shells now. <clears throat> I'll get him the shells now because if he train them up right, they'll just be a trophy that said, Lord, look what you kept me from. Y'all don't understand this. Do y'all get me today? Because I, I, I think about it because Jesus was tempted by Satan. I'm, I'm going to go to the tempted part. Is that all right? Some of y'all been tempted. And the temptation was brought on only by you. Did I say that? The temptation was only brought on by you because you wasn't fasting and praying. You fell in the temptation because you wanted it to happen. Did I say a deceit? Somebody said a deceitful mind. Deceitful thoughts. One of the apostles wrote, he said, I would give you a new heart, a new mind. You know, I understand that so many people are coming to church to use you. Did, did I say that? But I, I want you to fall into this category today. Do you know who you're working with? Do you know what you're working with? Do you know that you're saved in this vessel that you possess, this likeness of Christ? It's to hold Christ Jesus inside of you, God in you. It's to hold God. It's the temple that gives you power to overcome Satan. You might be running for Jesus, but you also might be running from Satan too. Because if you got something to do, Satan is attacking you. Did I say it? He's attacking you. But though he attacks you, he can't defeat you. Some of you are, oh, I've just got so much trouble. Wait a minute. God said he would not let put more on than you can bear. Some of you just giving in. Know what you're working with. You know who you're working with. If you know God, you know you're working with the King of kings, the Lord of Lord, who has all power in his hand. Well, where's your power? 
you can't depend on the pastor always. Hello? When he's here praying, what are you doing? You know, some of y'all don't understand that if you come up here for prayer, don't come asking that you be prayed for. You need to pray too. Some of you are going and asking the wrong people for prayer. D did I say it? Some of you are going to communicate, you you're communicating with Satan and not God. Well, you know, I, I just, I, I know they, they, they're good people. Good people ain't always saved people. What does scripture say? They dress up. They dress up. You know, if we stop dressing up and start living a righteous, a godly life, you could be like John the Baptist and, and be raggedy as can be. But guess what? The power of God is in you. You know, I'm not about any foolishness. I realize that God is out for us to be saved. I mean, not partially saved not sometimes saved not just saved on Sunday morning because we're going out every day and we're dealing with folks that's lost and if you ain't right with God you can't help them you're trying to get them here to the pastor to the house of God but you need to be able to help them first You just started working with people as full of Satan. Every, wait a minute, we've been working with them. But what can you do with them? You know, sometimes we don't get that God is setting us up for success. Elder. Pastor, God is setting us up for success. It's not about how many people is in here. It's about that you're in here and you're saved and you're sanctified and you're holy. And Satan can't blame you for being a sinner. Oh, did I? I better stop talking so loud. Wait a minute. There comes a point where when Satan sees you, See, sometimes, how, how many of y'all been working with Satan and people that are demon-possessed? And you know they demon-possessed. Some of y'all ain't raised your hand. I, I, I keep telling the, the saints, I said, if you've been saved so long, you should have somebody should have followed your light to the lighthouse to be saved. Wait a minute. The lighthouse was to keep you off the rocks. The lighthouse was to keep you from crashing and sinking. That's the natural, right? The spiritual is still sinking. Either you're going up or you're going down. You're getting out of the ocean. You're getting out of the pit or, or you're getting on higher ground. I realize that Satan is trying to accuse the church of so much. Satan right now is trying to accuse the church of hatred. I realize that if you don't get it, you better get it. Satan would have to come in here and accuse you of not loving them. And then they'd be talking about suing you. Well, we're suing the church. We're going to jail the pastor because he don't believe like we want him to believe. 
This is the instruction. This is the instructor. If you're not working with this, in all of this, did I say all of it? L listen, I, I realize that when Satan comes at you and he came at Eve, he came with part of this. D did I get that right? Did I get it right? He came with part of it. When Satan came to Jesus to tempt him after he was fasted 40, he came with part of it. Satan keeps coming after God's people with part of the word, not all of it. He can't come with all of it because he's, he's got to bow down to the God that's in you. If you got him in you. You need to know that if you got God in you, Satan will bow at the power of God, not to you, but to the power of God. He'll be subject to you. Let me put it in a better way. Is that a better way, Pastor? That's a better way. But if Satan is not subject to you, wait a minute. Let me back up a minute. If Satan is not subject to you, it's time that you get subject to God. Because if Satan don't fear you, uh-oh, Satan had a fear to not even go look at Job. Did y'all go there? Did y'all understand that? God had to say, have you considered my servant? Hmm. Have you considered my servant? Samson was also a servant. He was beating the enemy, the adversary, destroying him. But he kept going down to Delilah's house. Did I say that? He kept going to the enemy's camp. Uh-oh, I got off the subject a minute. He forgot what he was working with. He started working with Satan. Wait a minute. Oh, you know, he was laying in a bosom. He was trying to be the big man. Just because you saved, don't, don't, don't put yourself above God. Some of you are so saved that you can't give somebody you don't know a hug that said they're a child of God. Because they're different than you are. Mm -hmm. I, I, wanna, I want you to know today, I, I'm, a, I'm almost done. I, I know y'all got somewhere to go. This, <clears throat> but you know, I, I, I keep thinking about this because I, I was resting on this all week because people come into the house of God and they get saved. We baptize them. We instruct them. We love on them. They ain't but a moment and they gone. Because Satan is in one ear and the man of God is talking in the other ear. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I, I want you to get this because the word of God is so offensive to the works of Satan. Uh-oh. The power of God is so offensive to the works of Satan. Pastor, just keep preaching the word. Look, just, just, listen. What's wrong is wrong. Listen, I, I realized that I was wrong at one time. I was glad there was somebody strong enough to tell me I was wrong. Y'all hear me? I was, I was so happy that there was a man of God that laughed in my face in one day and told me, I told you so, son. He laughed at me. But that told me right then and there, look, that's a true man of God. He did tell me, and he's laughing at my calamity. Uh-oh, did I say that? 
But then I read the scripture, and the scripture said God was laughing at our calamity because we were disobedient. Uh oh. Hmm. We know what we're working with. We know who we're working with. I, I, as I talked this morning before I got here, this issue that the people of God have, they're praying for something. Y'all hear me? You're praying for something. But you're not praying that God would have his way with what you need. You want, but you're not, wait a minute. You really don't want what you need. I, listen. I realize that if I let God give me what I need, He'll pile it up. He'll press it down. He'll run it over. And I can give the run over away. But I want a spiritual run over. Hello? I realize that if the church right now how many of you come here and get blessed? Every, every time you come to church, you get blessed. Let your spiritual run over, run outside and on others. Those that Satan are trying to devour, give him the run over. Somebody said they was going to make sandwich, give them the run over too. Feed them and give them the bread of life also. Well, one, one thing about it, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Even those is full of Satan. Uh-oh. They're coming. Those that are full of Satan are coming to the house of God to be delivered. But when they get here and get delivered, are you going to help them? Do you have enough foundation? I know the pastor do. But are you going to have enough foundation as a helper? to know what you're working with so they'll be de delivered and set free. Wait a minute. I, look, I know Pastor Salmon is preaching to y'all, teaching. But can you recognize what's in your house? I, I want to let you know something. We're all workers together. Ain't none of us going to heaven unless we come unspotted, unblemished, and holy. Hello? If we come with evil in our heart, we ain't going to heaven. If we think we can serve Satan and God, we ain't going to heaven. Hello? If we can't take instructions from the pastor, we ain't going to heaven. If we can't take instructions from one another, oh, I didn't go there, did I? Wait a minute. We can't, listen, I, I, I want, see, I love people that can work together. How many of you got, got jobs and you got to go work together? You got to go work with folks that don't believe like you do. But they, do they believe in you and do they believe that God is in you? I want to encourage you today. You know, one thing about false preachers and false teachers, they're going to let you run like you are and no change. Hello? They don't want to see you changed. But God got a place for them. But are you running like the false? Uh-oh, did I, did I, I ain't saying that to you. That's not my job. But it is my job. 
I like the pastor. He sounded the trumpet, the call to worship. Hello? But he also sounds a trumpet by telling you the truth out of the word of God, from God, inspired by God. So many people are, are trying to get out of here. Like I said, I'm going to say this once again. They're trying to get away from this, this, this horrible place that they live in. This is not a horrible place for me to live in. I like living. You know why I like living now? Because I'm saved. The way Satan used to treat me, I wanted to get out of here. I, I think about it. Pastor was giving me his testimony. He just wanted to get out. Sometimes, you know what? Satan wants you to get out too if you preach in the word of God. Satan wants you to get out of his face. I didn't go there, did I? I, I, I didn't come here to try to be a fancy preacher today, but I want you to know what you're working with and who you're working with, what you have inside of you. Quit neglecting what you have inside. If God is in you, you'll fill it with the power of God. You're not full of fear. You're not full of fear. You're not scared of Satan. You're not scared of, scared of the workers of iniquity. Listen, I, I like it because we got so many false prophets and false teachers and false people in the church now that somebody better sh shout loud. Somebody better start screaming. I like my brother. You know why I like him? Because he's going to scream. He's going to sound the trumpet. He don't care what your name is. I don't care what your name is either. All I'm, I'm worried about is that you know what you're working with. Because if you don't know what you're working with, this prayer that's coming up is needed. So you know what you're working with. If Satan is running you down and got you so confused and so hurt that you can't praise God and you can't say amen, there needs to be a change. If you can't stop living in sin, there needs to be a change. If every time Satan come along, you tempt it, uh-oh, there needs to be another change. Sometimes you got to open your own mouth. You got to open your own mouth. You got to want God. God, take this out and put you in there. I keep telling you, if, if you take something out, you need to put something back in. That man that, what did he say, the house was swept, it was empty. Seven more came back because he didn't ask. Hmm. He didn't ask for nothing to be put in him. You know what's wrong with the church? They don't want to be filled with the Holy Ghost now. They scared of the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm praying that this overnight fasting and supplication and prayer all night long, that the Holy Ghost fall in this place. And they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Fire. That's what I want to see. That's what God wants to see too. This place needs to have revival. You know, we're getting ready to run a revival. I asked Pastor Mike come and uh, come and speak. Listen, I know something's good's been to happen. I don't have a doubt about it. You know why I don't have a doubt about it? Because there's lost souls everywhere. There's lost souls that walked by here this morning. Hello? I heard the emergency vehicles going by. There, there was somebody lost. Hello? But church, what are we going to do about it? It's time that we stand up with boldness. Some of y'all, how many of y'all got your football team is playing this morning? 
But when you get home, are you going to stand in the front of the TV and say, go team, go. And if they lose, and get him out. But do we have the same enthusiasm? I, 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 the, one of the songs said, I'm going to yell and I'm going to shout and I'm going to jump around. But are we going to do the same thing and have the same enthusiasm about getting Satan out of our lives? Oh, I, did. I didn't go there, did I? We got to have the same tenacity to drive Satan out of our family's lives. Did I say that? You know, it, it takes a real man to stand up for God. It takes a real woman to stand up for God. To know that they're not going to like you no more. I'm not worried about nobody liking me, Brother Gary. You know who I'm worried about? This is what I'm worried about. Because I know if I find favor with him, you all right with me. You don't have a choice. Satan don't have a choice. Did I say that? But if you ain't fighting in favor with God, Satan got... Uh-oh. Pastor, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Listen. Stand up. Be counted for. This is your team right here. This is your team. Look, we stand for the almighty God, the king of kings. We need to be so excited. I, I like Pastor Sound. I, I, every time I see him, he's excited. It, it could be hot outside, he's excited. Yes, brother, you know. I get excited too, but I'm not emotional with it. Hello? My team could lose, they could be winning, and I'm okay. You know why? I don't worship them, I worship God. I don't worship them, I worship God. I'm going to tell you thanks. And, and I'm going to close my Bible. <clears throat> Satan is doing all he can to deceive you. You hear me? He's trying his best to make you, let you come to the house of God. And the only time you open your Bible is here. Hello? Hello? I like this book. I like this scripture. It's an authentic account. Hello? If I can find in here what's going on today, it will give me the instructions to fix what's going on today. Hello? Because his word hasn't changed. Man's sins haven't changed. Did, did, did I go there? If they were writing about going to heaven and being raptured when the Bible was wrote, uh-oh, they still trying to do the same thing today. Well, we going with a red moon or something, you know, something, you know. They, they got all these signs. In World War I, they was having signs, wars and rumors of war. World War II, wars and rumors of war. D did I say that? Everybody was at war. Ain't nobody going nowhere, brother. Wait a minute, I take that back. I take it back. I don't want to lie to you. Those that's ready to go to heaven, God comes and gets them. Hello? One at a time, two at a time, however he pleases. Hello? It's how he pleases. Well, pastor, you know, wait a minute. Oh, stop, stop. I'm going to do like Pastor Salmon. 
I just want to be ready. I want you to be ready. If you're ready, you don't have to worry about what time he's coming. He said he comes as a thief in the night. Wait a minute. But the, when, when does Satan come? Uh-oh. Hmm. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to come when you get out of the will of God and God lets you go. Oh, I'm going to leave that alone. Some of y'all don't understand. Quit getting out of the will of God. Stay focused. Stay steadfast. Stay rooted and grounded. Quit running to Satan's camp. Quit letting Satan scare you. Did I say that? Every time that Satan comes up against you, if, if you don't know nothing else, plead the blood of Jesus. Every time Satan attacks you, just plead the blood of Jesus. When you get scared of dying, when you go to the doctor, the doctor says, well, like, you know, you got cancer, you got this. Well, Lord, <clears throat> get me ready to go. If I ain't ready to go, Lord, do what you got to do. But if, if this is what they say I got, Lord, what do you say I have? Uh-oh. You said, your word said I'm a healer. Uh oh wait a minute. Wow. Wait a minute. Did it, it didn't say that. Some of y'all are clapping. It said he was a healer. I got y'all again. It said his... By his stripes, we were healed. It's already done. You know, I think about every time I, I start feeling bad, y'all, I'm just crazy. Lord, if you're done with me, you know what to do. If you ain't done with me, do what you need to do. That works out pretty good. How many of y'all think God is done with you? How many of you are sick? How many of you are afflicted? He's not going to put no more on you than you can bear. It may be that he put you there. Y'all old folks, excuse me. You know, I was having trouble reading a while ago, but I'm going to blame it on the light. <clears throat> if I can't see, I can still preach. That didn't close my mouth, Elder. That just opened it a little wider to trust in him. Hold on a second. See, some of y'all are so worried about the way people perceive you. Just live for God. Don't worry about what somebody's going to say about you. You know, Brother Gary, <clears throat> I like shopping at Omar, the tent maker's place. Okay? Don't worry about the petite section. Okay? Because God made us in his image. His likeness. A ain't we all different in here today? Give yourselves a hand clap. Because if you're different and God is in you. Listen. I like this because Satan would want to play the dozens with us. Y'all, how many y'all play the dozens? Y'all, how many y'all know what the dozens is? You talk about one another, but you do it in friendship and love, right? If you would consider that Satan was trying to talk the dozens with you, uh oh, somebody, I'm finna help somebody today. If every time Satan start talking about you, just think it's the dozens. Play the dozens with him, but you better know the word. You better know the word. You better know how to attack him. It's not friendly anymore because he's your adversary. I think about it because as a pastor, I don't know how many times I get attacked, Pastor Mike, but it seems like it's regular. But you know what? I keep on going on. 
I, I don't let nothing stop me. Hello? I don't let it stop me. I can remember when I just got saved, it would have stopped me because I didn't know enough of the word. I realize every time that, see some of you young people and some of you old folks, y'all want to come to church when you want to come to church. That's exactly what Satan wants you to do. To be, dis, be, be discouraged. Be worried about what the word said about you. The word said you're an overcomer. If you need to be corrected, you'll overcome. Correction. Did, did it go over your head? I, I, I understand that. I used to be so mad at the pastor. My pastor, you know, Pastor Salmon, he used to get me. Oh, but it was God getting me. And I thought about it. I said, you know, if the church don't get no instruction and no correction, where are we going to be? Where are we going to be, y'all? I like what Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah about causing the people to hear. It may not need to be popular for you. For you to see a preacher jump up every Sunday and dance around and shout and scream at you. Hello? It may take some harsh words for you to hear and change. I like people that want to change. Not for the worse, but for the better. I, I don't want to see people that want to be stagnant. I can't make you do anything. But what I preach to you, I want you to be willing to accept the instruction. I realize that Samson, I'm going to go back to Samson. Excuse me, Pastor. I'm almost done. Samson didn't want to listen to his mother and father. God was with him. But he kept on going to work with Satan. Did I say that? He thought that if he kept going, he could keep fooling Satan. Some of us think we can keep fooling Satan. Satan knows who we are. Satan knows exactly who you are. Satan knows whether you've been sinning. Did I say that? But I, I come to tell you today A false prophet, false teachers, and those that are Satan's people, they don't care about you sinning and saying you professing that you're a child of God. Hello? But it's the true shepherd that cares about your soul. Amen? It's the true shepherd. I didn't come here to do a pastor's anniversary, church appreciation. I would just come to bring the word, and that's what I've done today. I, I hope that you know who you're working with. This is a man of God. Stand by him. Stand by him. Obey God's instruction. And if you, I'm, 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 can, I, can I pastor? When people think that they know more than the pastor. There's a scripture that says when they should be teaching, they need to be taught. Uh-oh. I'm going to help. I'm going to help. Can I help? Is that okay? I realize that I don't know it all. Hello? Iron sharpeneth iron. When you refuse to study God's word, when you refuse to go on your knees and pray, when you refuse to leave sin alone, God is not going to open his word up to you and you full of sin. Hello? I'm, I, I've got to be the meanest preacher in the world. Y'all done got quiet on me. I want to encourage you today.
let Satan know you know who he is. Okay? See, if you don't let Satan know that you know, he's going to keep coming after you. Hello? He's going to keep chasing you. you. You'll be talking about, I'm running for Jesus. I've just been, I'm so happy. But boy, the devil is coming against me. Did I say that? You know, I, I preached the message not too long ago. If you are a saint of God, why don't you attack Satan? Wait a minute. Because I realize that he's my adversary and he's all around me, but I'm going to attack him if he comes after me. Hello? I'm not going to lay in the bullet bosom of Delilah and get my hair cut off, get my strength taken from me. That's knowing who you're working with. God bless you. God keep you. I hope this word encourage you. If I could tell you more, I would. I, I got, I'm long-winded, but I don't have a chair to sit down and talk to you a minute. I, I started to bring my, my, my chair. I got a chair at church I sit down in. But I, I'm privileged to come and be with you. And I look forward to seeing you soon. And if you got anything today... Know that the God that's in you is much greater than Satan that's coming against you. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Thank you. Hallelujah. I thank God for what God is doing. Amen. And I thank you all for giving honor to our guest, uh, Pastor and Speaker. This morning, we'll give him another uh, round of applause and give him God the glory and the honor. Thank you guys for your patience and your blessing, and it is good to serve the Lord. Amen. I, I want to uh, just really quickly, um, in verse chapter 11, verse 3, he says, But I fear, least somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. One thing that the Apostle Paul feared was that people who believed in Jesus Christ were deceiving themselves. And uh, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is easy to, to accept. And here's where the altar call comes in is, it's easy for God to say, look, you need to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And it is so simple to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to say, Oh, praise God, I accept. But forgetting the other part of that, and it begins by first saying, Before you can accept, you must repent. Turn away from your sin and follow God. But the enemy, as the pastor said, the enemy comes in and he, and he tries to deceive you to let you think that you're saved. Even though you live in sin and you can continue living in sin and doing whatever you want to do, you're saved because of the gospel, because of the cross of Jesus Christ. You're saved. Go ahead. Have sex. Go ahead and, and, and leave your wife or your husband. Go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Because you've got God's grace. It is the same deception that was in the garden that said, eat, eat, you're not going to die. Eat. It's deceiving, it, is de it seduces, and it is so wonderful. It sounds so great. Yes, man, I hear all the people preaching that, grace, 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 the cross, the cross, the oh, yeah, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Really? You've been lied to. You've been deceived. 
You've been cheated off the blessing of God. And one day you will stand before God and he will look at you and say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't I go to church? Didn't I say amen and hallelujah? But what else did you do? Do you really know Jesus Christ? Do you really know Jesus Christ? People say, well, I know God loves me. Okay, praise God, but do you love him back? How many would accept the marriage where the person, you, you love the person, but the other person doesn't love you? You think that would be a happy marriage? It would not. God is calling each and every one of us to look to him and say, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to obey you. I know the cross. I know the power that's in the cross. And I know that cross gives me power over the enemy that when he comes into my house, when he comes to my family, when he comes to my children, God has empowered me to overcome. John 10.10, 10, the thief. Jesus says the thief doesn't come but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I came that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Let me just say this. If you don't have life, it's not because God's word is null and void. It's because you've allowed the enemy to come in and steal, kill, and to destroy. Isn't it time that you look in the mirror and say, that's enough? I'm going to stop making excuses of why I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to start serving God, and when my body says, oh, no, forget about it, I'm going to say, no, I rebuke you, I'm getting up, and I'm doing what God calls me to do. When that time comes, when you look before God, and you say, God, I'm a child, your child, God's going to look at you and go, thou good and faithful servant, come into what I have inherited for you. It's all yours. To be saved means giving up your old and coming to Christ. Saying, Lord, I want to serve you. Have you made that decision today? As we get dismissed, will you all just stand up as we dismiss you? And first of all, again, I thank you for your patience. Our service is running longer than usual. But you know what? Praise God. Amen. I'm going to ask you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to come forward so we can pray for you. Now you're probably going to think, well, I'm not, don't stay where you're at right now. Don't come forward yet. Don't rush the altar. Because it first begins by saying, I give up. My, I'm not living my old life again. I want to live for you. Now, I don't know you. I know some of you, and you don't really know me. You know, some of you know me. So let me just say this. You know yourself. I tell you before God, if you were to die today, listen to me. This is serious. If you were to die today, today, this, you walk out that door, and God forbid something were to happen to you today, and you were to stand before God on that day of judgment, what would he say to you? If you know that you haven't really lived your life for God, you, maybe you're not evil. I mean, you're not sitting in your, in your cave trying to wonder how to take over the world. But maybe it's as simple as you haven't really given your life to Jesus. You... You've put work, you put your family, you put everything else before God. And you know, Jesus says, anyone who loves this, that, or that more than me is not worthy of me. And you're saying, God, I want to serve you. I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to be saved. I need you to come into my life. I need you in my life now. I want you to Come forward. Come and stand right here in the front. 
just come on. If there's anyone out there, I don't care how long you've been coming to church. I don't care if you're the only person out here. If there is anyone, I give you the call. We give you the call and the chance to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Listen, Jesus says, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. Come on over. Some of you are hanging on to those pews like they're going to save you. <laughs> Listen, this is not an airplane. Don't hang on to the chairs. That's not your life raft. Jesus Christ is your way. I want you to walk forward. I want you to stand and say, you know what? Before God, I need to be saved. I need God to fill me with his spirit. I need God to really change me. Because I'm really religious. I'm relig How many know there's a difference between being religious and really having a relationship with Jesus Christ? So I'm going to, because of time... We don't have much time, so I'm giving it to you. Call again. Don't worry, I'm not going to let you do the hokey pokey and all that stuff. But if there's anyone at this time, if you need to know and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to pray with you right now. Is there anyone? Amen. Thank you, sister. Bold for the Lord. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else? I would ask just some of the ladies to please come and pray for Sister Jasmine here. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else? Listen to me. The hardest part of a long journey is the first step. And how many know this is the first step? Saying, Lord, I receive you. I need to give my life to you. So, I'm going to count to 10, and then I'm going to pray. Anyone else? Come now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Praise God. Every one of you have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God has moved in each and every one of your life. If you don't know him, I pray the Lord will send people in your life and move in your heart to come to know him. Father, right now, we thank you, Lord God, for Jasmine. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in her heart and her life, for the salvation you are putting in her, Father God, for the work that you are producing in her, Lord God. Protect her, Lord God. Father God, the enemy will come against her, Lord, but you are mightier, Lord, and he who is in us is greater than he that is of the world. Right now, Father, we thank you, God, for your blessing. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your grace, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God is good, and all the time... We serve a mighty God. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. There is no one greater and mightier than you, Lord God. We are your children called by your name. We stand by the blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed us, empowered us, Lord God, to overcome the enemy. Greater is he that lives in us than he that is in the world. We love you, Lord God. Saints of God, walk in the ways of the Lord. Serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. Saints of God, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And all the saints of God say amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Christ be with you. God, Lord, you are good.